You probably don't need me to tell you what's on your screen right now, but for the sake of emphasis, that is indeed a green hammerhead shark nitro boosting over the Hollywood sign. And if that doesn't strike your fancy, then we've got nothing to talk about. Thanks for stopping by on your way over to the Sonic content, but for the rest of you who took in this glorious sight and responded with, tell me more, tell me more. well then I'm gonna tell you more. Welcome to Portable, where we look at the portable ports of an arcade game. Today we're looking at Cruise and Blast. Now you might hear that name and depending on your age, you might respond in one of two ways. If you're older, you might be thinking to yourself, is that a new cruising game? Or if you're younger, you might be thinking, hey, isn't that that racing game I found at my local failing laser tag family fun center? And you'd both be right. Blast is indeed a revival of the long dormant cruising series found all over arcades and Nintendo 64s in the mid 90s. And Cruise and Blast did just get released on the Switch, but is not exactly new as this particular entry has been around since 2017, at least in arcades. It was brought back from the dead by Raw Thrills and also Nintendo, I suppose? I mean, their name's all over the arcade unit. Cruising games have literally only ever appeared on Nintendo systems, but I don't actually know if they own this series or if it's Raw Thrills. I don't, I can't find it anywhere. If anyone can tell me, let me know. But regardless of that, Raw Thrills made the game. These are the same folks who have made pretty much every modern rendition of all kinds of arcade favorites you'd find at Dave & Buster's. And as a cherry on top, Raw Thrills was founded by Eugene Jarvis, the man who directed the original Cruise in USA. So obviously, this franchise is back in the right hands. But can this game live up to the legacy of the other Cruisins? Yeah, obviously. Look, I love the cruising games as much as the next 90s boomer, but let's be real, that wasn't exactly a high bar to clear. Especially when you consider the last few pathetic attempts to make some money off the name of the franchise. You can actually go check out a video I did on the Game Boy games if you want to learn more, because they're a... Uh... <laughs> Oh, there's something. Well, in the case of Blast, thankfully Eugene has not lost his touch. Because Blast is a blast to play. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm funny. Thankfully not just in arcades, but also on the Switch as well. But unfortunately not everything made its way over to the handheld. This is the Switch after all, so they had to cut back on some graphical goodness from that original arcade release. Eugene mentioned that Blast moved over to the Switch with some surprising ease, and they got it started up and running without too much issue, but unfortunately a lot of their shaders and special effects took their toll on the frame rate. And on top of that, they kept the tradition of having a plethora of creatures to mow down in the arcade version, but not an animal in sight on the switch how am i supposed to satiate my bloodlust eugene so yes there is a noticeable graphical dip and even though modern consoles could run the arcade original just fine like i said cruising has only ever been ported to nintendo consoles and i don't expect that to change anytime soon still not all is lost raw thrills had their priorities in order and knew where to make sacrifices because this game runs at a smooth 60 frames per second both dock and portable and even with multiplayer that runs anywhere between 30 and 60 frames they focus on making the game run at as smoothly as possible and their hard work paid off. And even without some extra special effects, the levels themselves are still bombastic over the top racing goodness. Gameplay is still intact and it's as straightforward as ever. You race to the finish while avoiding environmental hazards, keep track of your nitro boost, Mario Kart drift around corners, which can also give you an extra boost, and throw in a burnout style takedown for good measure. Yeah, there's a trick system and there's boosting and all this other stuff, but it's very simple gameplay and like cruising games before it, not much will actually slow you down. Most things you hit might as well be made out of styrofoam. And while we don't have the arcade racing wheel here, the controls themselves are incredibly smooth and responsive. It's not remotely realistic, and I'm just fine with that. Seriously, drifting feels more like a suggestion more than an actual requirement. And for the portable player, you do have tilt control options as well as auto acceleration if you're so inclined. Didn't take advantage of them myself, but it is nice to see Raw Thrills made this as accessible as possible. This is an arcade racer after all. And on top of that, the Switch version does offer some more more substantial options in terms of gameplay. But while the trailer for the game does advertise 29 tracks, it is just mixing up the core five tracks that came from the original. And some of these quote unquote new tracks are ridiculously short. I mean, like less than a minute long, but still they do add in some really dynamic assets and shake it up enough that it doesn't feel repetitive. And all these extra tracks can be found in the modes exclusive to the Switch release. You of course have your classic arcade mode, but on top of that, you do have some tried and true options you'd expect 
from console racers, time trial, multiplayer, and cruise and tour. These are campaigns of four races, all with a consistent theme. And this is where you'll find the rest of the 29 tracks to fill that list out. Again, it's fun to see some shakeups in these already dynamic tracks, but for the most part, they're mostly cosmetic changes while mixing up the set pieces. But you know, during one of the races, I had to land on a ship during an alien invasion and had to launch off the other side of it through a flaming donut, all while being a unicorn. Yeah, I've seen that ship a couple times up to that point, but there's enough here that it kept me interested. And the alien invasion is actually one of the tour themes. There's also a night mode, which is, uh, yeah, just a few races at night. A storm mode, which adds a bit of drizzle. A dinosaur tour, which just takes dinosaurs out of one of the race tracks and puts them on the other race tracks, which is fine with me. I love dinosaurs. Also a helicopter tour that just has helicopters firing missiles at you, as well as a tour that has cops hound you through each of the races. They don't provide much of a challenge, at least not through easy, but I noticed through normal, they got a little bit more aggressive and hard mode and going forward. Yeah, they do become a problem. <laughs> so it does shake it up quite a bit here. In these tracks, as well as the original five, you can collect cash and keys and earn XP. Completing tours and collecting keys will unlock cars, or well, it'll give you the option to buy cars. Even after you unlock them, you still have to spend cash and keys to truly add them to your roster. And the XP is there to level up your car. Leveling up will bump up stats a little bit, as well as unlock cosmetic options. And by unlock, I mean, gives you the option to buy. And while there are a lot of cars to level up, they all cap out at level five. And even then, it won't take too much time to tone up your favorites. And if you're so inclined, polishing off the rest of them should only take a few hours. Because every race type is gonna get you cash and XP. And that includes the time trials. But not only that, you can actually collect keys in the time trials as well. There are three in each track. And yes, that does include the tour tracks. But regardless of the difficulty level, once you collect that key, it's yours forever, regardless of the mode you grabbed it in. And while some are more challenging to grab than others, I didn't have to look up a single location for these things. They're all relatively easy to find. And again, you can take the worry of winning a race off your shoulders and just collect these in the time trial mode. I honestly don't mind this. Yeah, I can see the appeal of tracking down each key during the heat of a race being an extra level of challenge, and that's certainly a way to go if you so desire. But I've always been a sucker for time trials and racing games. I love being able to explore at my leisure and just cruise. Yeah, despite the title, it's not something you actually do a lot of the time in these games. And I know with the keys, level up system, reuse tracks, everything added may sound like tedious padding, but I promise you it's not. There is just enough here for this type of game to make it fun to experience on your own, and of course, with other people. And for me, it was a worthwhile purchase. I do think 40 bucks might be a little steep, but honestly, outside of that, there's just enough here to keep me coming back for more, but not so much that it makes me bored. They make it easy to unlock everything I need so I can just pop it in for multiplayer down the road, or just revisit this every now and then just to experience these insane levels again. And none of the collectibles or gameplay or any of that is going to be as robust or technical as the likes of Gran Turismo or Forza. But also, I'm a Triceratops. I don't need this to be another Gran Turismo. We get this kind of crap every year, and I miss arcade racers so much. I know this is all spectacle, but I am here for it. I love this stuff. No, it's not as crazy fun as Burnout can be, but when's the last time we got a Burnout? Give me more games like this. I love it. This is why video games exist. Spectacle racers are mindless fun with crazy crap happening all over the place. And if I caught your interest with that hammerhead shark at the top of this video, then you already know you want this game. If you're comfortable dropping 40 bucks down on a game where you'll have mostly everything unlocked by the end of the day, then I say go for it. There is clearly a lot of care put into this very simple, silly good time. This was a surprisingly solid port and a redemption for previous portable cruising games. And it feels good to have cruising back and better than ever. And I certainly hope we see more in the future. But that's gonna do it for today, guys. Kept a nice short review for a nice short game. I know most people are here for Sonic content more than anything else, but if you're still giving me your time despite that, I greatly appreciate it because I do need to talk about other stuff outside of Sonic. That said, I am still working on my Colors Ultimate review. I am looking at three, four, got five different versions of one game. So I want to give it as much deliberation as possible, but I do promise it is coming soon. But outside of that, I also need to let you know that I am walking away from my daytime job to focus more on YouTube. It's a scary move, but I think a fairly necessary one at this point. I really want to focus up and get out more content and make it the best it can possibly be. And if you want to help me out, the best thing you can do, honestly, is support videos like this. I do always appreciate people here for the Sonic content, but if you enjoyed what you saw today 
update and you want to see more stuff like this, then I am going to need your help getting that out there and showing people that I can talk about more than just a silly blue hedgehog. We will still get back to him, of course, but I do think it's good to keep things diverse on this channel. That said, you can also help assist with Patreon if you are so inclined, like these amazing people right here, including Kyle Winter, Joseph Duncan, Sonic 2 Blue, John, Casey Cornrow, Trey Nobles, Hatsworth, Nick S, Tristan Trapp, Meekers, Dun Dun, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Bouge, Rain, Sam Webster, Dwight Graham, Fish Flop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Shodan, Mr. SP, Missing No, Stefan Placa, Placa Clap, Placa ne <laughs> Stefan, tell me how you say your name. <laughs> Three Monic, Graham J. Hall Audio, Leonard Zex, Wayne is Boss, Jamie Chevalier, Lederick, Beanie, 64 Bits, David 20 Covers, Ryan Rolfs, The Lumberjack, and Miles Prower Radio Hour. Oh, that rhyme. Oh, I just, I just realized that rhyme. <laughs> That's adorable. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your assistance. It really means a lot to me because I know how hard it is to earn money. So I know it's not always easy to pass that on to some random lunatic who just rambles about video games on the internet so thank you sincerely thank you and of course to the rest of the patreons that you're seeing on the screen thank you guys as well i really truly appreciate it but i got a lot of stuff to go work on and if i don't stop now these thank yous are going to become just as long as the review itself so i'm gonna get back to that so until next time toot toot you triceratops seems i can eventually play a fire truck about it oh they're making car babies <laughs> ka-chow